Welcome everyone to our webinar today from Jitterbit on easy mode. Welcome everyone to our webinar today from Jitterbit on EDI integration. My name is Andrew Lee. I'm VP of Marketing and Alliance. Mode. Welcome everyone to our webinar today from Jitterbit on EDI integration. My name is Andrew Lee. I'm VP of Marketing and Alliances at Jitterbit. And I'm very proud to have on the call today our very own Cynthia Drake, who is the CTO of Complete EDI. Welcome, Cynthia. Thank you, Andrew. So in today's webinar, essentially what we want to do is we've got a large group. I have to say I'm, I'm amazed. There are over 500 people who registered for our EDI um, webinar today. It's the second one that we've given over six months. We rolled out the initial EDI solution probably about eight months ago. Um, since then, I can say that the demand has actually over tripled. And I'm not going to say it's one of our top two, but it's in the top three of the different endpoints that we're starting to see out in the marketplace. So what we're going to try to do today is give kind of a general overview of Jitterbit as an integration platform, then dive down specifically into the EDI integration that is built into the platform. Um, we'll talk about specifically a couple customer stories and how they're implementing both Jitterbit and EDI integration. And then we'll go right into a live demo of the EDI integration. We'll see how we can set up the different EDI standards within Jitterbit, how you can onboard and manage EDI training partners. And then most importantly, at the very end, we'll open up for questions and answers from the audience. Um, for those of you who want to ask questions, um, please go into the GoToPanel. And in the GoToPanel, there is a questions uh, box. Just submit your questions and we will go ahead and answer as many as we possibly can. For those of you who are a little shy, uh, if you want just us to answer directly your question um, and just say please don't announce and we can get back to you directly. If you do have a project and you're trying to do something like EDI integration or any kind of integration and you just want to talk to an expert after the webinar, please just put in the question, I have a project, please give me a call and we'll have an expert call you as well. So with that, let's go ahead and dive right into our webinar today. You know, overall, we live in a hyper-connected world. There are, you know, thousands and thousands of different endpoints that companies are expected to connect. And these endpoints are coming from the emerging Internet of Things that promises, hard to believe, 50 billion things that have to be connected in the next few years. Those are social, those are mobile, those are sensor-driven. We have a fairly mature now enterprise set of cloud services from cloud platforms and application vendors like Salesforce.com and NetSuite and Amazon and Workday and DocuSign. And then we still have the 80% of enterprise data that is being stored and managed on the core enterprise systems that sit behind the firewall. Of course, these are systems like SAP and Microsoft and Oracle and of course, Probably about two-thirds of all those systems still are databases and data warehouses and custom enterprise applications. And the real trick for a company today is to be able to integrate all of these different systems and endpoints into a modern digital process that opens up new markets and drives new efficiencies. And that's essentially what we're in the business of doing at Jitterbit. Now to support that issue and that business problem, we are rolling out Jitterbit Harmony, and Jitterbit Harmony is the latest release from Jitterbit. We're extremely excited. It represents 10 years of integration expertise and an evolution of our platform from open source to client server to now what we believe is the most modern cloud integration platform available. Uh, into that, we've built a full and complete integration lifecycle management, so we've really made it easy to be able to integrate many, many different endpoints um, and be able to actually manage the life cycle of those endpoints by kind of a plug-and-play architecture. Um, we've also, of course, focused in on the different types of endpoints. So we've seen kind of the traditional ODBC, the traditional SOAP and web service-based endpoints, but we're seeing that shift out into the Internet and these endpoints that exist outside the firewall and use new standards, things like REST and JSON. As always, 
we're very focused in on time to value. We believe that there's a better way to do integration. We look back to the previous generations of the web methods and the TIBCOs and the Informaticas and the IBMs, these projects that took hundreds of thousands of dollars and spanned you know, months and sometimes years to implement. And we simply believe that in the modern cloud-based era, people are really expecting integration that takes only days and costs tens of thousands of dollars. Um, we focused in on a design principle where you design the integration one time within the Jitterbit Studio, and then you're able to simply deploy that integration any way that you choose. And that means that you can run it 100% out on the cloud, or you can run it 100% behind your firewall. Or, of course, you can run it in a hybrid mode as well. Now, we're very proud of the customer success that we've generated. We always measure our success by the value that our customers get from the product itself. Of course, you know, we've got some of the biggest brand names out there. Uh, you know, I just had a customer who came in today who joined us from Iceland. Um, so we truly do have a global presence. Um, people are using us across, you know, all the major enterprise packaged uh, applications, whether that's Oracle and SAP and Microsoft, and all of the major cloud services, whether that's Salesforce or, again, Microsoft or NetSuite. And we're very proud to be able to automate all the different types of business processes that you see out here today. Again, a focus on time to value and speed of delivery. The average implementation of Jitterbit still takes less than 10 days. And for pretty straightforward integrations like Salesforce to a database, we're still very proud of the fact that over 40% of our customers actually self-implement. Now, in terms of connectivity, we're really focused in on a set of technical connectors. Everything is based on those technical connectors, whether that's the SOAP connector that represents about half of our integrations, the REST connector that represents about 20 to 25 percent of our integrations, the ODBC and JDBC technical connectors specific to those types of databases, the EDI connector, which we're going to talk specifically about, um, and of course we also have an LDAP connector. And on top of that core set of technical connectors, we have built a suite of enterprise connectors for the most common back office and front office solutions. And unlike a lot of the other vendors out there, we've really focused in on native connectivity and building these connectors directly into the product itself. So in terms of the back office, again, we focus in on the Microsoft uh, dynamic suites, the GPs, the AX, the Navisions. We also, of course, have Oracle EBS, NetSuite. We see a lot of SAP, especially ECC and Financial Force. And in the front office, we're very proud to, again, work with the folks from Salesforce.com, Aptis, ServiceMax, again, SAP CRM, and Microsoft. So let's go ahead and dive into the connector and the actual overall solutions that this webinar is all about, which is EDI. So EDI to me, I think, is still one of the most amazing kind of phases of integration, if you will. Long before we were talking about REST and SOAP, EDI came about as electronic data interchange. And really, the idea here was it was a way for companies to be able to exchange um, digital documents back and forth. And the real trick today, even though a lot of people think that EDI may be phasing out as new integration standards are coming up, if anything, we're actually seeing it's gaining a lot more momentum. Um, if you want to integrate out to endpoints and companies like uh, Walmart or Kmart or eBay um, or any major B2B kind of organization, all of them are set up with EDI. And often, that's the only option that they provide to you. So the real trick for our companies is if I have Oracle or I have J.D. Edwards or I've got SAP on premise, or even if I'm using something like NetSuite or Salesforce or Workday, how do I take the data that exists within those systems and be able to transform them into the appropriate EDI standards? And here we can see kind of four of the most common EDI standards, although there are a lot more, whether that's Edifact, ANSI, TradeCloms, or HL7 for healthcare, and really be able to share kind of the common documents and the formats that people expect. And you know, this is just a very small um, listing of the different documents that are shared across EDI. But you know, most often we're seeing those purchase orders or shipment notices or the credit debit adjustments or the different payment remittance. But there's a whole long list of the different types of documents and information that's shared across EDI. 
So specifically, the Jitterbit EDI solution um, is basically a solution that's built natively into the Jitterbit platform itself. It really allows you to connect to all major databases, and again, we're using our technology connectors for things like ODBC and JDBC. It allows you to connect to all major enterprise endpoints, and often we're using SOAP or REST or the different connectors available in the product. And then it allows you to be able to basically uh, transform that into EDI standards, and we'll talk specifically about that. Um, I know Symphony will talk a little bit about some of these customers that are implementing, but really it's all about the time to value. It's the speed of delivery, although we also believe we provide the fastest or the best TCO overall in the market. And I think you'll also be impressed in the way that we not only support the transformation of the standards across the different groups, but also that ability to be able to quickly set up training partners and manage them as well. Now, Cynthia, I'm going to start bringing you in here because at some point in time I start to get to the end of my EDI expertise and I want to bring in a CTO like yourself who has been doing this, I think, is it 15 or 20 years or so? Yeah, about that, about 17, 18 years. You're right on. Perfect. Now, when I talk about connectivity, I think everybody on the call is probably pretty comfortable about how we connect to the kind of traditional enterprise endpoints using SOAP, REST, ODBC, or JDBC. But then we have this whole process of being able to map it to the specific standards within uh, EDI. Can you talk a little bit about those standards, what you see as the most common, and kind of some of the things that are built within the product to enable that? Sure. Um, as far as the most common are the ANSI X12 for the United States, and then outside of the United States would be Tradecoms as well as Edify. And then within the healthcare industry, you've got the HL7. And we can support all of those uh, standards within the product. So uh, yes, all the standards, all the versions, all of the transactions that go with those. All right. And I think during the live demo, you're going to show how those are actually available basically as drop downs. The formats are built natively into the product. Um, but it's not just the mapping and the transformation. You know, as all integration, ultimately, you have to be able to orchestrate business processes and specific tasks around that. And as I understand it with EDI, there's actually some very specific types of processes. Um, so when we talk about something like a hierarchical HL loop, what exactly is that? So one of the challenges um, working with uh, EDI translations, translators in all these years is the HL uh, loop for the advanced ship notice. That's just one of the documents that use it. It's really complicated to, to move the, the structure that the standard has for that particular um, segment and we've developed our standard that we use our, our um, makes it very easy it's almost like a straight link so you can cut down time probably about 70 percent of the time it might take you to normally do that for other uh, products so we wanted to make sure we made that easier for everybody perfect all right so from a technical perspective we kind of have the three core steps connect to your enterprise system whenever that might be, Salesforce, NetSuite, SAP, custom application, do the data mapping and the transformation into the EDI um, standards, and then be able to kind of apply kind of process management to that. Let's go ahead and see, in terms of customers, how this actually plays out in real life. Um, probably one of our favorite customers out there, and you know, I was just out with the NetSuite folks maybe about three or four weeks ago at their different sales offices talking about um, our integration and how it transforms business. And Pet360 was this great example of a customer who's really started to standardize on NetSuite for both um, CRM but also for ERP. Even more important than just standardizing on their enterprise app, they were actually thinking about kind of a go-to-market strategy. It's essentially a website where I can get all of my pet's needs all in a single place. So. They attach to their enterprise source, which is NetSuite, but they also attach to things like Amazon as a, a web storefront. They're also attaching out to some custom applications like their prescription management application. They have a number of legacy applications from Oracle and also their uh, right now call center, which I think is actually being transferred over to NetSuite. They've got all kinds of custom databases for things like online orders, and again, they've got kind of a mobile custom uh, commerce app. But what a lot of people don't see within the story is that they're also really trying to hook out to a pretty complex 
and uh, and large EDI trading partner network. They're actually hooking up uh, to over 50 different trading partners. Um, I think Cynthia, you've actually spent a little bit of time with PEP360. You know what's going on with this implementation? I have. I'm excited about this implementation. I have to admit that of all the years of doing major implementations, and not only are they doing what you just described, as well as bringing on new EDI, this is this is a very uh, fast integration, and uh, we're I'm in this type of integration would would normally take maybe one to two years, and they're doing it within just a few months. And so I'm excited that they did that, that they're doing that, as well as the EDI uh, being able to bring up their trading partners a lot faster. It's, it's going to save them a lot of money for implementation, as well as their software. Is, it's, it's not as expensive as some of the competitors that, that we, we see out in the world. Yeah, and I, you know, when I see 50 trading partners and you see another – you know, dozen endpoints. I mean, this is a yes. very complex enterprise-grade integration. As you said, this is something that's taking place. The implementation is happening only in a matter of a few weeks. Um, you know, I see EDI customers sometimes that seem to only have two trading partners, and then I see other um, customers that have 50 trading partners. Is 50 a lot of trading partners for a company? 50 is uh, for that's that's pretty much yeah for a large company um, that is a, a lot of trading partners but I think what makes them so special is outside of just doing the basic three the purchase order the invoice and the shipment notice they're actually transfer doing warehouse transfers they're also bringing in drop shipments um, they're doing inventory so the the number of transactions that they're using with these 50 trading partners are about 12 different transactions. Wow. Yeah, and that along with, you know, 5,000 orders per day that are now yes. being done basically in real time, um, yes. you know, I think a really, really impressive example of how you can use integration in general to connect kind of your overall on-premise world to the new world of cloud services, but then really be able to kind of amp that up with an EDI strategy to kind of tie out to you know, 15 trading partners, I think that is probably one of the largest that I've seen. Now, a second customer here, and I think this is probably one of our original Lighthouse customers, and I still like these guys, History Press. Um, these guys are making books. They're a publisher, and they want to be able to make their books and then be able to distribute their books, and they do that through a number of different distributors. Um, I think these guys actually added, when they first started their project, it was what, just two different endpoints, but now they've added endpoints like I want to say Ingram Books might be new, and then the big one is I don't think people realize that EDI is being used for online services like Amazon.com. Can you talk a little bit about the History Press, kind of where they started and where they're going? Yes. Uh, actually, History Press approached us and said, you know, I've, I'm having, I'm struggling with trying to get, I, I want to get the larger companies, but I only have, I have one trading partner that I have to be EDI compliant with or we can't do business with them and we want to branch out. So as we started, we have the, the purchase orders, the shipments, uh, the credit debit, debit adjustment as well as payment remittance, but their operation is it's, it's strictly automated. I, it, I help them set it up. It's working. Uh, there's there's no manual inter intervention as all, at all. So they're just really happy with with how everything's going, and just a few weeks ago, they said, "Okay, it's time to bring Ingram Books and Amazon, and we probably got a few more we want to bring on." So this has really saved them a lot of time. They're they're getting their biggest challenge was we're not getting paid, our invoices aren't getting paid, and they have the uh, invoices are being paid, and things are working really well with them. That's great. Now, give me an idea. I know History Press. You know, this is a small, mid-sized business where Pet360 is much bigger. Uh, yes. But for History Press, how many people do they have that kind of manage this integration EDI environment? Well, they they only had two in-house, and the challenge they had was they didn't really have they didn't know anything about EDI, so they wanted to be able to just let somebody somebody else do that for them, and that's what I did. I said, just tell me what you need to do, and we'll take care of it. So very little um, interaction within their people. I worked with their trading partners. I worked with their ERP vendor. We got everything up and running for them, and that's why they probably just maybe a, a couple days for testing, 
they were pretty hands off. That's great. So, you know, I know in this webinar that we have both EDI gurus, but we also have people who are brand new to EDI. Um, I think a lot of people are familiar with with the concept of a purchase order or an invoice, but when I see these numbers attached, mm -hmm. an 850 or an 856 or an 810, you know, how is that different in the EDI world? What does that represent? That's that's just a it determines it's just a number that identifies what that particular like a purchase order that's an 850, and and it's just the way that the standards identifies what that transaction is. So it's a it's a EDI terminology and. People that have been doing EDI for years, they they no longer say purchase order. They just say 850 or 810. Their terminology just changes. Yeah, I always uh, smile whenever I see that. I think in the EDI world, you guys have done such a better job of actually defining exactly what the data and specifically the document should look like. You know, whenever we deal with customers who are just doing pure soap or even rest. Often that means that they have the protocol for how the data should actually be passed back and forth between the systems, and they have the access, but what they don't have is actually the format, an agreed format between the two groups. And I think that's truly the value that EDI brings to people is there is an agreed format of the data structure across the entire organization and community. So the last slide that we want to do is actually provide a pricing slide. And at Jitterbit, I think everybody knows on the call, we try to be very transparent, very simple. We do try to be a low-cost provider. All of our pricing and additions is available out on our website, jitterbit.com. So if you go to jitterbit.com, you can see all the endpoints we support. You can see all of these customer stories and many more. Uh, but there's a pricing and additions link. If you hit that, you can see all of our pricing. It's basically three-tiered pricing based on the number of endpoints. Uh, but specific for EDI, we wanted to let people know, you know, there's basically two different levels that are being provided in here. And the first one is we really kind of rank the, the level based on the number of trading partners. We, again, tried to keep it very simple. We tried not to put it on different document types or transaction volumes. We really tried to think of trading partners. So the professional version essentially gives you up to 20 trading partners. Um, and essentially, with professional, you have the professional edition of Jitterbit at 2500 per month. That gives you a total of four endpoints, and EDI counts as only one of the four endpoints. And then essentially, you just plug on the EDI module, which is $10,000 per year. Um, and we provide full unlimited document types. Now, in the enterprise world, and this would be an example of something like a PET360, here we give you unlimited trading partners. Um, now we have you're using the enterprise edition of Jitterbit, which provides you additional support and a few additions in terms of testing and performance. Um, for that, it's five thousand dollars per month. The EDI module for those unlimited trading partners is fifteen thousand dollars per year, and EDI again counts as only one of the eight endpoints for the enterprise edition, and again unlimited documents. And let me ask you, Cynthia, how does this compare to the kind of pricing and the cost that they would probably see outside this market? Yeah, um, the companies I've worked with before, this is a very small amount of price for all of the functionality that we're providing. Um, it's a minimum, and I'd say very basic, 100,000, 150, probably closer to 200,000 for this type of functionality that both products are providing for everyone. Yeah, that's great. And you know, you and I were actually talking about this earlier. There's not only the fact that the actual solution is probably half the cost of kind of the traditional on-premise options that are out there, but also it's that time to delivery. It's the actual professional services that are required to put it in. Uh, I think you had a couple examples that you mentioned from PET360 that it might be, you know, up to a quarter or a third of the implementation time of traditional solutions. Exactly. Yes, I, I've been on accounts that are n not even as complex as theirs, and it's been one, almost probably two years to get all that up and running, and I'm just really excited that they're able to do this in such a short time. Perfect. So, Cynthia, let's go ahead and dive right into live demo. I think you have the ability uh, to show us the product itself. I'm going to go ahead and hand you over presenter rights. Okay. Okay, give me two seconds here. There you go. Uh -oh. And I want to do a I reminder. <laughs> what was that? Never mind. I've got it. 
<laughs> Perfect. And I want to remind everybody who's on the call today, uh, we're going to give you a live demo, and here's something I can see your screen coming up on the webinar. Um, okay. But in the meantime, if you guys have any questions, uh, anything for either the folks at Jitterbit or Cynthia around EDI, please go ahead and put those questions in that question panel, and we'll go ahead and answer them at the end of the webinar. So Cynthia, yeah, go ahead. Take us through the product. Okay. Uh, first, uh, this is a... Uh all I need to transmit a, an 810 or an invoice, and I'm going to show you briefly, this is taking data from an FTP server and actually putting it, the target into another FTP server. So there's my source, there's my target. So just to let everyone know, it's so easy to set this operation up that you can do this within, within minutes. The meat of it is here. This is the transformation part of it. And what I'm showing today is, is on that left-hand side is a flat file. You could look at this as SAP. It could be any, any type of flat file. And for this example, I'm using a, uh, just a, a flat file from a system called IPUB. And on the right, you will see that you have EDI data. And one of the things that the ease that I like about this is I can go in here and, and the way easy, the ease of testing this, and I can just go in and, and populate on the left-hand side the data. So this data is actually coming from a server and it populates on, on the source side. And if I click on this, it will actually populate information on the, on the target side. So that's how our mapper is, and that's how the mapper is. So whatever uh, document I use, the 810, version 4010, just you would be able to make that either on the target or on the source. Another example I'm going to show you is a quick um, invoice, if I want to flip it around. Hey, Cynthia, let me ask you real quick. Sure. Oh, okay, so here you're going into the mapping and the transformation, and this is where you were talking about moving from that enterprise segment and then converting into the EDI standards. Let me ask you, can you put that put that on maximum screen? I think it might be easier to read oh. it. Oh, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, did I not have it? Uh, I lost uh, it. It's <laughs> right up at the very top, at, at the top left. I, oh, no, keep going. did it's, I miss uh, it? Max screen, just <laughs> like you normally do in a max screen. Um, so it would be the green kind of plus button or, or dot at the top left of your, of your file. Oh, I'm sorry. There you go. There you go. I forget. Oh, no, nope. all the way still. <laughs> Thank there you very go. much for that. No right. problem. There we go. So now I can read the mapping. So go ahead and walk us through again. So here I'm looking at the different segments, the currency segment, the REF. What do those kind of represent? And then, you know, how are you sure. actually mapping it over to the target? Okay, this is an invoice, and the BEG segment would be the beginning segment, and inside this is this. Each one of these have has what we call an element, and there's certain data. Now, this BEG three is a purchase order, so I literally would be just drawing a link from from here, just clicking it, and I'll do it on one that's not already. Um, you just drag it over here. Right, pretty easy to do. Drop and drag. I needed to do any type of customization. I can go in here, and this is uh, I have multiple um, functions within the with the translator that allows me to do any type of programming, any type of customization that I may need to do to man manipulate the data. So uh, by looking at this, I can actually go out here and uh, and be able to see that the input is EDI. And the output is a flat file. So I just actually flipped it around from what it was before. I'm not going to change it. So just to show you how I did that, I'm going to create a real fast one. It created an operation, and I'm just going to say transformation. And those three uh, icons that I showed you earlier, it's going to say where's the source and where's the target, and here's the transformation. Your source is going to allow you to multiple different types of sources. You can say I want it to be from a database, file share, FTP, HTT, LDAP, or temporary, or even a local file. So it gives you multiple sources that you can use for your map. All the sources are the same as the target, so whatever my source is, I can also select them for the target. So for my example, what I did is I did FTP. I did FTP for both the source and for the target because that's what I'm using currently for the trading partner that I'm working with. So if I created a brand new transformation, I would just say if, if it's EDI as a source, I would just go in and click EDI. And then the target, if I needed it to be text, if I needed it to be database, just click it on. 
And as far as uh, I'm going to say 850 because I want to do a purchase order. And then for my target, I'm going to put a, a flat file that I already had created. And that's how easy it is to create the map. And all you do is just do those links like I just did a minute ago. Um, the, the ref segment is a reference. It could be like a uh, reference number for uh, some type of uh, internal reference number. The N1 segment is down here, which talk about your ship to, build to information. So all of these are EDI terms. But again, it's so easy to just go in and drag and drop it. I could go in here and say purchase order number and just drag it over there. So we don't have time to do the entire map, but I wanted to show you that I actually did have one. So what I, before I actually go out and, and uh, I want to process this 810 in a minute, but I wanted to show, to show you what Jitterbit EDI does as well. So once, once you have created your map, you have an operation name, that would be this, and you have a map name. I want to point that out because that's going to, on this next screen, you're going to be able to, you need to identify that. So this is Jitterbit EDI. And what a Jitterbit EDI does, it not only it allows you to view the data, make sure that it's in process, it also goes out and it will do acknowledgments if you need to see an acknowledgment, match that acknowledge, acknowledgment for a, an outbound document. So for this particular, say I have a brand new customer, brand new trading partner. All I would have to do is click on this, go in and put the company's name, uh, just say new company, and add it. And I can literally set up a trading partner in minutes. The next thing I want to do is um, what is their ID? And I would just create that. If you look, when I said new company, it automatically puts it in a drop-down box. I don't have to key that in again. If I just said ZZ123, whatever that value is, just add that. And if you see that, you will find that here's your new company and your EDI address. And I've got duplicates in there just because I was demoing this earlier. So that tells me what that says. This is a company, and this is their EDI address. Those are the two main things you will know when setting up EDI. They'll, have, they'll ask you that. The next question I want to know is, remember I mentioned about the map and the operation? Well, here I need to go in, and if you remember what that map name was, if you key in the map name, and I think it was demo 850, and the operation, and, and I don't remember what that is, but that would I'd be able to do that. The document type, uh, PO for purchase order, and that's uh, EDI term. And the transaction type is 850. And I would just add that. And again, here's, here's where I just added it. So all, what I'm doing is I'm building all this information for the one thing I need to do is now actually set up my trading partner. And if you see in minutes, I'm setting this trading partner up. I've worked with translators and it takes a lot, it takes so much time to do that, that um, if I have 50 or 100 trading partners, it could take me forever. When you get to adding a trading partner, a test or production, and remember all those companies that I put in, they're already here for me. I just have to click on them. And if I said one, two, three, it defaults to the company that I just put in. If I say, what is the address, if I, that's going to be some, uh, one, another one of your trading partners, you could put, um, and again, it, def it defaults. And then the map name that we put in, all I have to do is select the map name. And uh, it defaults to the operation name. Very easy to use. And your control numbers, these are what you would use for outbound documents. The EDI plugin automatically generates a control number for outbound documents so that you're able to, um, it's not something you have to put in manually. And if you, know, if you needed to start with a specific control number, say you're moving from one system to another and you want to continue on that next control number, you would just type this in manually. But at default, the ISA, the GS, and the ST control number is uh, starts uh, are zero, and then they just increment each one. Next is, do I need to send an acknowledgement? 
and these are, uh, for those that are familiar with EDI, an acknowledgement is if somebody sends you an inbound document, you need to acknowledge back to them that you received it. Well, that's all it took to set up their trading partner. After, and what this, this here is your detail screen, what it does is when I process data, I'm able to see the data after I've processed it, and I can click on it and I can view the actual EDI data. So I've got quite a bit of data out there right now. And you can add a date range. If I just want to view today's, and that's all I put in there, I have 117 entries. I was doing some tests and just wanted to let everybody see that it does work. And in a minute, I'm going to run another uh, an invoice. If I click on that, you can see the actual EDI data. So if you're trying to test and you want to make sure that your output is what's expected, you can look at it this way very easy. So I'm going to jump over, um, but also there's multiple searches. If I just want to search on a purchase order number, I could just do, every screen has a perch on it, uh, a, a search. I can search on reference number, control numbers, transaction type, whether or not it's something's been acknowledged or not, um, multiple search criteria. So let me jump right back over to uh, this, and I'm going to run a, um, I'm going to run an 810 and populate the Jitterbit uh, EDI screen. So all I have to do is go up here to this little lightning bolt. And it will show up. Oh, it's going to tell me I don't have any data. <laughs> so um, hang on just to, actually, I, I can fix that real fast. I just ran it before and I used my data. Um, Let me throw some more data out there for you guys. Let's see where I'm sending that from. Okay. So, Maude, Cynthia, Always you had this planned the whole time. I did. I had this. I just ran it. So now I've, I've got to make sure that it's still out there. See, it, ran, it, it changed the name to audit <laughs> archive. So that's why it's not finding this. So no big deal. change my data out here. I wanted to show you guys that it does process. And let's test to make sure that the data is there. There it is. And you're testing the connection back to the site? Yep. I am, yes. I'm doing multiple tests here. So not having data actually made it made you guys see one extra thing that the product does. Okay, as you see it says it's a green check mark says it's okay. If I flip back over to Jitter EDI and I refresh, you will see a bunch of 810s in there. You notice it said it had 117 entries, and now it has 131. And if I just do a search on 810, there's my data that I just, and it also gives me I the invoice number. If I needed to search on a specific invoice number to see if it's been sent out, I can just search on the invoice number. So it's real easy, very fast to use, and um, I think uh, I'm excited about using it. I only wish I had used this many, many years ago because <laughs> it, it would have saved, saved a lot of time that it took me to set up all new trading partners. So, Andrew, that's anything else you want me to go over before I uh, think that's no, no, high I'm, level? I'm impressed. I think, you know, you showed us kind of a package solution. You showed us how you actually built one from custom. You actually went back and clearly showed us that you had a real-time demo by repopulating your demo or the data itself, yeah. and then, of course, validating the, uh, the credentials, the authentication, um, and did all of that in a matter of nine minutes. I'm impressed, Cynthia. Yeah. You know, I'm <laughs> curious, Cynthia, you were saying earlier, when did you start with EDI? How long ago was it? I've actually been doing EDI since 1995, and uh, I, I've, I wish it, the challenges that of all I've I've used a couple different products, and they are it, it, there. There are a lot of problems with the not being able to move data from one from maybe a detailed uh, area to a header area. Um, all kinds of different problems that this product no long they I don't have them anymore. And it would it normally used to take about two days to create a map, and I can create a map now in about an hour. And I actually taught, I trained someone who has never done mapping before in their life, 
uh, how to create a map in two hours. And I used to teach a class that took four days. So that's what's, that's what's so great about it is, is the time it takes. It's not a difficult product to use. It's not a difficult product to learn. And it's fast. And all of those, I, it would have saved me a lot of time. And I, I'm sure that uh, a lot of other companies are going to see this as well. Oh, perfect. So we are getting a lot of questions starting to come into the queue, <laughs> and it is that time. And I will tell you, Cynthia, a lot of these are very EDI specific, so you're going to have to uh, walk through it with me a little bit. But the first one we have is, do you support RosettaNet standards for EDI? Um, we, uh, let me double check on that. I, I was, I'm first going to say yes. But let me double check with them on that from the developers. But um, I am familiar with it. So let me get whoever that is, if, you, if I can call you back or, or get back with you on that. But uh, we support everything. So Rosetta Net, I don't believe it's going to be a problem at all. OK, perfect. Now the next one is a little bit more general. And it was earlier in the webinar, but I think it was somebody who was saying explaining just what EDI is is not as important to them as how does the overall product work. And hopefully with the live demo, we've explained it a little bit more. But I'll take a quick shot at it. If anybody didn't catch, the way that we design integrations at Jitterbit is basically a three-step process. And this is true whether you're doing an integration from Salesforce to SAP or if you're doing Salesforce to EDI. We look at it the same. The first thing that you saw Cynthia do was actually design the integration in the studio. And in the studio, mm -hmm. that's where we actually attached to the endpoints. And that's where we authenticated to those endpoints. We come in just like a regular user. We have the security protocols of a regular user. And we can only access the data that you give us the permissions to access. And then you saw the mapping and the transformation screen. So in this case, we were mapping. Um, from an enterprise system data source to the EDI standards. So there's mapping and transformation in all integrations. And then you can apply logic and actually orchestrate that process. So across multiple steps or string together different operations, things like data validation, um, concatenation, et cetera. And then once we've designed the integration, that's the first phase, then you deploy the integration or you run it. Now the big difference with Jitterbit Harmony is that we allow you the option to either run that integration 100% in the cloud on our platform, so no software, no hardware required, or you can deploy and run that integration behind your firewall on a Win Windows or Linux server. And then once you run your integration, then you simply manage your integration. And you can see actually from those kind of success and failure indicators, we give you a full web management console that shows you exactly what was successful and what failed. So there's a very quick kind of 30 minute example of how we do it. Um, of course, we can dive down even deeper. Um, but let me go ahead and jump in to our next question. Um, we have purchased Jitterbit for up to four endpoints. Would EDI count as one of the endpoints? Yes, so EDI would count as one endpoint. Um, so in the professional edition, you get one, you get four endpoints. It would be one of the four. The good news here is if you were, uh, you know, hooking up to ten trading partners, we don't treat each one of the trading partners as an additional endpoint. EDI is simply the endpoint out there. Uh, next one we have. We use SAP Business by Design as one endpoint. And I think you're asking whether or not we support that. We do support SAP Business by Design. We do it as a technical connector through SOAP and REST APIs. Uh, one of our best Business by Design examples out there is Skullcandy. Um, we do work together with you on the SDK on Business by Design. Um, but we actually have a couple customers that have actually been very successful. Uh, we see a lot more SAP, ECC, and of course we hook up to all the other ERPs out there. Um, here's another one, and Cynthia, here's a good one for you. Uh, could you tell me a little bit more about the AS2 format? The, the AS2 protocol? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, the AS2, uh, that is a... A lot, a lot of the larger companies, such as Walmart, Kmart, require AS2 um, as, as a way to connect from transmit data, and we do support that as well. So we've got uh, we've got FTP, SFTP, AS2, um, all of this, all the protocols, and even if you, if you need to go through a van, we'll go through a van as well. 
Perfect. Here we have one specific to History Press. Uh, Julie wanted to know, uh, after you set up History Press with these trading partners, who takes on responsibility for EDI compliance with those trading partners going forward? Jitterbit or in-house at History Press? And how are errors flagged and who fixes them? Great question. Well, History Press, we're actually managing that for them. They, uh, they do, since they don't have the staff inside in the house to do that. So we monitor their data, and we do all the transmission within our server. And we just, every month, whatever their data volume is, we just send them a bill for their data volume. Any errors that come out, um, we, do, we have alerts within the system that will send an email to our support team. And if anything happens, then we'll go ahead and fix it. Um, one of the things that uh, the, the IT director from History Press said, he said, I've actually had five EDI vendors before you guys. He said, I can pick up the phone and call you guys. And you, and you responded to me within 20 minutes. And he's really happy with the response time. But we, we talk to their trading partners. It's almost like we're an employee of theirs, uh, but we just we take over everything for them. And that, I think that's why they're so excited with working with us. It's, it's, they don't understand EDI, but we do, and we just do everything for them that we can to help them out. Yeah, that's a, it's a perfect segue into another one of the questions that we had, and it's one that we get asked a jitterbit on a regular basis, which is, who does the services and the implementations? Um, I will answer it from kind of the general jitterbit perspective, and then Cynthia will let you touch on it. Um, but you know, our goal at Jitterbit is not to be a services organization. We do have a small services um, group, which are kind of SWAT team experts that um, can do the implementations 100%, or they can often kind of help out an implementation team. Generally, implementation teams for integration are only one or two people. Generally, they only take a maximum of a few weeks. We also work with some of the largest and even some of the boutique SIs out there in all the different ecosystems, whether that's Deloitte or Accenture or Aperio or Cloud Sherpas. You know, we work with well over 120 different system integrators. Now for EDI specific, um, while those people might be able to provide some good EDI expertise, and I think, you know, we'll let them speak to that, I think, Cynthia, you and your team have pretty much been the best in terms of doing services and implementation. You talk about doing the history press where you manage everything. Are there also examples where you kind of get it up and primed and then hand it all over to the customer and train them? Exactly. In fact, that's what we're doing for PET360. We're doing all the work, and then when we finish it, we're just going to export that into a jitter pack and email it to them. Um, or actually, we have access to their system. So our staff is, we are very proud of our EDI staff. Every one of them has had at least 15 years EDI experience, and they work for GXS and IBM and Sterling Commerce. So we, ha we feel like we have the best of the breed EDI staff. So what, when a new project comes in, we'll, we'll just have one of our uh, consultants go in, set up all the work, work with the, work with the company, and either, um, either do it all for them or a mixture. We do some and then the company. So we do, we do whatever it takes to get the job done. But uh, it's really, and that's one of the things I, I after I finished my talk about uh, Jitterbit, what I liked about the product is the fact that somebody, off, somebody remotely can do all the work, set it all up, and just email that to them or get c connect to their system and upload it. It's so easy to do that. And I've never seen a product that you can do that within seconds. That's great. All right, from Sarah, we get a, uh, can you talk a little bit about how Jitterbit integrates with Microsoft Dynamics GP? Um, absolutely, Sarah. So we actually have a Microsoft Dynamics GP connector. We have several GP customers. Uh, I actually spent my time last week uh, out at Microsoft Convergence. So we had a fantastic time learning about all the new uh, solutions that are coming down the pipe from all the different Dynamics products, um, including GP, including Division, including AX, including what's happening from their CRM team. We work with all of those. We have good customer references. Uh, and I will say, specific to EDI, you know, walking the floors of Dynamics at the at down on the expo, I probably counted about a half a different half a dozen different EDI vendors, and all they did was Microsoft to EDI, where I think the solution that we're providing at Jitterbit is a much broader solution than what I had seen 
um, at Dynamics in that you can integrate to not just the Microsoft endpoint, but any endpoint in general. And we think we can, we can do it in a much faster and less expensive way. Uh, so the bottom line is, yes, we do support Microsoft GP. Um, here's a good one. And, you know, it's a competitive question, but how does this product differ from IBM WebSphere Message Broker, um, which is also an integration product from IBM? You know, the bottom line is it's one of the many uh, integration products that are available from IBM. IBM at this point in time, I think, has about 12 to 15 different integration solutions. Uh, the biggest difference with the IBM solutions is that, you know, most of the IBM solutions, actually all of them are kind of the previous generation integration solution. They're all on-premise. Uh, many of them are fairly complex to implement. They require several weeks, if not months, to get in. Uh, they generally require a team of two to three people to be able to manage them. Uh, the price point, of course, for the initial solution, but also the implementation is very high. Um, the difference specific with the message broker is that it's kind of a traditional ESB, so it's kind of doing a, a queuing and a request and reply. Um, we're supporting the real-time integration as well as the data integration the same, uh, but we just use a different technique to do it. Um, in their case, they would only run the integration on-premise where we could make that integration runtime either on the cloud or on-premise. Uh, and the other big difference I think that you would see is where the uh, message broker from IBM has been around for a while, I think the quality of connectors and the breadth of connectors that are available from Jitterbit um, are a lot better. So not only are we integrating to IBM products, but we also are integrating to the whole suite of cloud services like Salesforce, Aptis, ServiceMax, um, NetSuite, and of course we also have full integration to things like SAP, Microsoft, Oracle, and custom apps. Um, let's see what else we have here. Uh, here's a good one, Cynthia. Uh, can you modify the EDI standards that partners often require? Change mandatory to optional or add additional EDI code values? Yes, we can, and that, that's the beauty of it because our, our EDI um, versions and standards are in XML, and so it's actually XML and it translates into EDI. So we have some, uh, that, that's not difficult to do at all, and that's, I, I understand because that's been a challenge in other companies. In fact, one of the things we did for Skull Candy was uh, we took a, a document that's a normally an 820 transaction, and they needed it to be a uh, different standard versus, uh, and we actually did created a SWIFT standard and as well as a um, another type of standard for them. So we modified their current standard, and so it would work into their system. Perfect. Okay. Is there validation on inbound and outbound EDI? Uh, the validation will be in our next release, which will be in about three months. But yes, we do have, other than you can definitely, right now you can validate it within Jitterbit to go out and, and if there's specific values that you want to make sure come in and if they don't come in, error out, you can do that within a, a script. But as far as an EDI standards, as far as is it, is it, uh, is it mandatory, is it optional, is this a correct length, uh, correct data type, all of that will be in our next release. Perfect. Um, do you support UN at a fact syntax rules of the EDI standard? Yeah, I, I think that's uh, that would that's the one that's also going to be in our next release because that's where you have all the when you say syntax rules, that's the the edit the editing of it. But yes, that'll be all in our next in our next release. Perfect. Okay. Um, is there a limit to the number of references number per document? Can I use the PO and invoice number on an 810 as reference values and search them independently of each other? Sure, because uh, the fact that when you have that within the reference field, it actually says PO and then it also says the reference number. So that's the different, you, you can differentiate that. If I, if I just put in one reference number, say a purchase order number, and I wanted to see it match the invoice as well as the shipment. Whenever you, 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 you make a decision on what you want that reference number to be, we just use purchase order invoice. If you want that number to be something else, uh, you can set that up as well. Great question. Yeah, perfect. No, it's, it always cracks me up. The EDI folks, you have a language all of your own. We do. Uh, 
<laughs> but here's someone, one that I in <laughs> What was someone that? Someone told me I could I could I could read EDI data better than I can read English. <laughs> you can speak EDIE. Yes. Um, so here's a good one, which is my kind of language, and I think Jitterbit in general, um, which is, can I get a copy of the software for download um, to try out or prototype? Um, I know for Jitterbit, we absolutely do do that. So as a next step for anybody who wants to get their hands on the code, you can go out to Jitterbit at any time, sign up for a free 30-day trial, and you can play with the technology itself. However, I don't believe that that includes the EDI module. And it Cynthia, does. I think it does, it does have now. it in there. Yes, we do have a 30-day free trial as well. We just started offering that. Perfect. So we do. So we have both the 30-day uh, trial of Jitterbit in general, and also you guys can try out hands-on, try out the EDI. And of course, you know, Cynthia and team, we're more than happy to jump on a call with, with anybody to explain how this works, give you a more mm -hmm. detailed demo. Um, and actually, you know, based on a qualified deal, we're happy to even do a quick POC with you. Um, are you going to share this PowerPoint? Uh, what we do is we make all the webinars available. They're all fully recorded under the Learn tab on our website, jitterbit.com. Uh, this will be posted probably within 24 hours. You can go ahead and listen to it. Uh, you can hand it out to anybody, and there are additional webinars out there as well. Um, I'm going to go through a couple more because we're coming right up towards the top of the hour, but the questions are coming fast and furious, and this is definitely our favorite part of the time. I want to make sure we get to as many as possible. Please describe the custom EDI documents, oh, how the custom EDI documents are created. Please also describe how a process is published from test to production. Okay, so I'm trying to think when you say custom, can you re repeat the first part of it? Because the second part was, was yeah. pretty easy. Yeah, <laughs> moving from a, just. The Please describe how the custom EDI documents are created and then describe the process, uh, how the process is published from test to production. So are you talking about de developing the map, the, what I demoed, creating a map? Um, if, I mean, it, I'd be more than happy to offline, you know, talk more about it, but it's very <laughs> easy. I'm laughing and because uh, William, who sent the question, sent out, yes. How yes, is a okay. custom 850 created? Nothing like real-time Q&A. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So yes, meaning he wants to talk to me offline? Uh, you know, he might be, but what he's saying is yes, how you described it, the mapping is what he's oh, okay. looking for. And then he specifically said, how is a custom 850 created? Yeah, and, and that's uh, depending on if it's an inbound or an outbound. We just select EDI and then as well as, as if it's a source or the target. And then um, whether what if it's going to be a flat file, a database. So uh, in a little bit more about custom. Uh, if you need to modify that, um, I'll, I'll definitely go into that a little bit more. I'm, I'm thinking custom, maybe you're adding a, a, an extra segment or something that's not in the standards. What we would do is we would have, um, we, we would go ahead and give you a customized XSD. Just tell us what you need it to look like, and then we would send it over to you. Perfect. And by the way, a uh, great example is William's one of these examples where he said, yeah, please, let's talk offline. I think you guys, <laughs> if you chat a little bit for 10 or 15 okay. minutes or so, that would be great. William will pass your information on to Cynthia. And again, to anybody who's on the call today who wants to go a little bit deeper, you have a project, you kind of want to go one-on-one -on -one with Cynthia, um, please let us know. Just say, please call me afterwards, um, and we will go deeper with you. A uh, couple other quick ones here. Um, what other workflow items are available in an operation other than target translate and destination? Ah, bunch. <laughs> um, everything in Jitterbit, archive, um, I didn't go through every one of those. And, and Andrew, I don't know if you want to touch on that or not, but there's everything from web service calls. And, and one of the things I, I meant to demo is there. I do have a transformation out there where it's a web service call that's actually taking data out of NetSuite translating it into EDI. Um, there's scripts, there's, I'm just off the top of my head, I'm trying to remember everything that's out there. File, uh, creation of files. There's multiple, there's probably about 12 different other processes that you can just link together. Yep. So that was uh, a very small operation. You can have an operation that, if, that can be, a, you could probably have, I don't even know if there is a limit, a hundred different other processes that you could just 
uh, connect together to make all that happen if you needed it. And, uh, and I'm not sure. I don't think there is a limitation on jitterbit. Nope, and I will simply leave that as well. I think that's a good one to kind of take offline in terms of yeah. we can we can orchestrate some extremely complex business processes, whether they're EDI or any of the enterprise processes out there. We can do the traditional web services. We can do the REST services. We can apply all kinds of logic. There's an entire kind of graphical formula builder to do things like data validation. Um, there's a lot you can do. I think you know definitely let us kind of go deep on with you on a personal demo, um, or download the product for a quick 30-day trial. Um, now we're three minutes over the hour, and I've just got a handful of these left. Um, let's see what it was. Uh, is there data quality issues with the source file, such as the customer name or PO number is missing? Is it possible to do a validation in Jitterbit? Yes. <laughs> and in then fact, the we are. We are doing that. Uh, one of the things, and we, we can send it out, either have an error alert or send it into an error file or re report. So we can definitely do that currently. Perfect. Uh, here's a good one. Where are our trading partners putting in the orders? Is it an FTP site or Jitterbit EDI site UI? Um, they would be. They would actually be dropping their, their data into uh, FTP, SFTP, or whatever protocol. Okay, perfect. So we do have kind of a handful of other questions and they're still coming in. So again, thank you so much and we're going to do the, our best to get back to anybody where we didn't answer your question online. Again, I have to thank everybody I mentioned earlier. There were several hundred registrants um, and there are actually over 200 people on the call today on our webinar. So we're so excited um, for kind of the interest and the demand in the Jitterbit EDI solution. Uh, thank you so much, Cynthia, for coming on. You're yes. absolutely the uh, our EDI guru. Uh, for anybody on the call who wants to go a little bit deeper on Jitterbit in general or specifically dive down on EDI, you can see, go ahead and just send us an email over at info at jitterbit.com. Go ahead and give us a buzz at the 877 number or put something in the go-to questions. Um, but we thank you all for your time. We appreciate it, and have a great day. Thank you.